Good morning, preschool classroom. How is everybody's weekend? Let me open the door. The doors are locked so we can keep all the germs out. Oh, hello, classroom. How was your weekend? Oh, baby. <laughs> You're ready to start your day already, huh? I think baby wants to watch us feed the fish this morning. How are you, fishies? Let's turn on your light. Oh, how's it going? Oh, they look nice and warm in there. I'll give them a little sprinkle, some breakfast. Oh, there it goes. Well, good morning, preschoolers. How was your weekend? Mine was great. I shoveled lots of snow. What? Here's the babies again! <laughs> they want to help with Morning Circle. They missed you guys this weekend and had so much fun last week with Circle. So it looks like they want to do the Mindful Minute this morning. <clears throat> but first, we're going to start by doing our exercises. Hi guys, good morning! First we're going to start by doing leg raises. These are a little tricky, but they're very good for your abdomen, for your core. So I'm going to lay down on my back. Can you guys lay down on your back? Okay. I have to scoot back a little bit. All right. Maybe I'll put you down here. Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay. going to do is lay flat on your back and you're going to keep your back on the ground and you're going to raise up your legs so keep your head on the ground your back on the ground and raise up your legs together ready one two three four Five. I bet you guys can go further down than me. Can you touch the ground almost? Oh, ah, okay, and rest. Lift your legs up, and we're going to just use one at a time like a butterfly. Ready? Let's do some butterfly kicks. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, thank you, guys. Feels so nice to get out of the house and be able to do some exercises with you guys really needed it. I would like to do moon pose for yoga next. Have you guys done moon pose before? I don't think we have done moon pose together. So we're going to start in mountain pose. Do you remember how to do mountain pose? From the ground, you can stand up. From the ground, you can stand up, plant your feet in the ground, plant your mountain. Put your hands in front of your heart. Take a deep breath in. And for mountain pose, you're standing like this. For mountain pose, you can put your hands up and to the side like a moon. So up and to the side like the moon. Awesome. Let's try the other side. Bend into a moon shape. Reach towards the sky. And rest your hands on the ground, or on, on your sides. <laughs> Perfect. Good job, you guys. Okay. Now the babies are ready to do <laughs> the dice and bells. I'm going to have baby catch the dice for me, okay? Do you guys remember what the dice means? Yeah, it means whatever number we land on is how many deep breaths we'll take together and how many times I'll ring the mindful bell. Are you ready? Okay, here you go, baby. Whoop. Oh. You guys see what number that is? One, two, Three, four. All right. 
Find your comfy position, if that's on the couch, on the ground, in a chair, wherever you'd like to be. I'm going to sit crisscross applesauce, but you guys can sit however comfortable position you want. And we said four deep breaths in through our nose, out through our mouth. Ready? Number one. Two. actually helped me make a glitter jar this morning and I thought that this is something maybe you could do at home what we got was what we found was a plastic jar and some glitter and I put a little bit of glitter in there and a little bit of water what happens when I shake it all up <gasps> whoa what happens to the glitter yeah it's going really crazy this is kind of like when we have so many thoughts in our mind and they're not settling down this is what our mind kind of feels like, right? Maybe a little crazy, lots of thoughts that you can't calm down. So if you're ever feeling like that at home, if you're ever feeling like you need a break to yourself, or you need a minute, or you just need to calm down, you can um, use your glitter jar by shaking it and then watching until the glitter calms down. See how it's calming? It's taking its time. Let's take some breaths. Wow, look at all the glitter calm down on the bottom, kind of like your guys' thoughts. I know sometimes my thoughts go kind of crazy and I have a lot and it's hard to control and I tell myself, oh, I just need a minute. So if that happens to you at home, Please go ahead and try a glitter jar. Maybe you could put other things in here. Maybe Legos, marbles, rocks. All right, guys. I'm going to sing the good morning song to you now. Are you ready? Can you guys sing it with me? Good morning, Oscar and Augie. Good morning, Charlie and Ren. Good morning, Ray and Joaquin. Good morning, Kayla and Kai. Good morning, Taylor and Tristan. Good morning, Lincoln and Kingston. Good morning, Bobby Ellen. Good morning, Victor and Anna. Good morning, Max and Lucy. Good morning, Harper and Roscoe. Good morning, Camille and Hannah. Good morning, Nova and Judah. Good morning, Dayati. Good morning, class or house. Let's wake up our house. Ready, let's go. Wake her up, wake up your house, or your classroom, and three, two, one, <sighs> great job, good morning everybody, I hope you had a great weekend, um, after this circle, let's find out what we're going to do, we'll check out the schedule, what's on our schedule for the day, so circle started, correct, mindful minute in yoga. I showed you how you could do the glitter jars at home. The babies helped us with the bells. Thank you, babies. I'll excuse you to play inside and eat breakfast if you haven't. And then you'll have to help clean up. Don't forget to help clean up. And we'll have a little circle with Erin, Miss Erin. You can ask your parents if you can go outside for some playtime outdoors. We'll have an activity circle with Miss Erin. Go to the bathroom, wash your hands, eat lunch, brush teeth, read books, take a rest, do some quiet activities, have some afternoon snack, maybe play outside a little bit or play a game inside. And then you'll have um, afternoon circle with Mrs. Laura Lane. Wow, that looks like a fun day that we have. Uh-oh, this thing fell off. Before I excuse you to go play inside your house, I thought that we could read a really special book together. It's about manners. 
You've probably been practicing your manners at home with your parents, playing, saying please and thank you, and may I have a, can I please, how can I help you mom, things like that, so that we can be helpful at home and have um, very positive and nice attitudes. I'm sure your parents um, have maybe some things around the house that you can ask if you can help with. That would be very polite, right? Well, in this book, this is about the, the Bernstein Bears. It's called The Bernstein Bears Forget Their Manners by Stan and Jan Bernstein. Bernstein. And it looks like, uh-oh, where are they? <gasps> They're at the table. <laughs> it looks like maybe they forgot their manners. And we haven't been practicing together at lunch, so maybe you forgot your manners too. I hope not. But let's see if um, we can help the Bernstein Bears figure out how that they can have polite manners at home. <clears throat> the Bernstein Bears forget their manners. Who says, please and thank you help quite a lot to make a polite bear out of one who is not. There was trouble in the big tree, house down a sunny dirt road deep in bear country. Trouble with manners. Oh no, the bear family's trouble with manners was that they forgot them. At first it was just occasional, please or thank you, that was forgotten. But then there was a rude push without saying, excuse me. Then a reach across the table instead of asking, can you please pros pass the broccoli? Mama Bear wasn't quite sure how or why it happened, <clears throat> but she was sure of one thing, whatever the reason, the Bear family had a big, had become a pushing, shoving, name-calling, ill-mannered mess. At the table, it was even worse. Oh no, they were grabbing, mouth-stuffing, food-fighting, and kicking under the table. Ah. Of course, Mama Bear tried to correct Brother and Sister Bear's behavior. She tried coaxing, she tried complaining, she tried shouting, she tried going to Papa for help though it sometimes seemed to Mama that he was part of the problem. Uh-oh. Papa banged on the table and shouted as loud as he could, but nothing really seemed to do anything. Mama didn't like what was happening to her family, not one bit. Something had to change. But what? The best way to fight bad habits, she thought, was with good habits. Then she thought of a plan. She got a big piece of cardboard and a marker, and at the top she wrote the Bear Family Politeness Plan. When the plan was finished, she called a family meeting and showed it to her, pop, to her papa and the cubs. It certainly got the family bear's attention. Here's their plan. Forgetting please or thank you? Uh-oh. You have to sweep front steps. Pushing or shoving? You have to clean the rugs. Interrupting? You have to dust downstairs, name calling, clean the cellar, banging the door, clean the attic, <gasps> forgetting to say excuse me, she's having them empty the garage. Mama's plan had a list of all the rude things she wanted to stop. Besides, each one was a penalty, a job or a chore that had to go with it. If you forgot to say please or thank you, you had to sweep the front steps. If you pushed or shoved, you have to clean the rugs. But Mama, sputtered the cubs, you're not being fair. It seems to me that you're the ones who aren't being fair to yourselves or anyone else. That, what that mean, that's what manners are all about, being fair and considerate. Manners are very important. They help us get along with each other. Why, without manners, uh-oh, Papa interrupted her. Your Mama's absolutely right. Thank you, Papa, for your comment, but interrupting is number three on the rude list. And the penalty is dusting the stairs. So Mama handed him the duster. Hmm, said Brother, this looks serious. I think we'd better come up with a plan of our own, or we're going to be doing a lot of extra chores. What sort of plan, asked Sister? Well, instead of just being polite, we need to be super polite. We'll please and thank you so much that Mama will get all fed up and call the whole thing off. 
Yes, said sister, we'll be so polite, she won't be able to stand it. They put their plan into action. They were super polite, on the stairs, after you, sister dear, thank you, brother dear. In the hall, excuse me, brother dear, why, of course, certainly, my little sister. Waiting for the bathroom, terribly sorry to have to keep you waiting, she said, thinking nothing of it, my dear. They were being so kind to each other. But it didn't work the way that they expected. Mama didn't get fed up at all. And after a while, brother and sister forgot about being super polite. And they were just polite. At the table, pass the honey, please. Certainly. In the room, would you like me to help you pick up your toys? Thank you very much. In the yard, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. That's all right, no harm done. And it turned out that Mama had been right. Things did go more smoothly. Once they had gotten to the good habit of good manners, they didn't even think about it. But it wasn't easy for Papa. He was the one who got fed up. It's a little harder to change habits when you're older. And he had to do quite a few extra chores for, get, for forgetting his manners. I'm glad to get out of the house away from the politeness plan, he said as he drove off to the supermarket. Manners and courtesy are just important way, are just as important away from home, especially on the road," said Mama as she stopped at the stop sign to let pedestrian, pedestrians and other cars pass. They help us drive safely. Well, grumpled, grumpled Papa, I think you can have too much of a good thing. You've got to have common sense along with manners. Why, if you let everyone go ahead of you in the checkout line, you'll be there forever. And sometimes you have to interrupt. Excuse me, madam, he interrupted, a shopper, but I believe your cart is leaking a bottle from your cart. She helped him. She said thank you for his help. You see, he said, driving home, there's more to life than just remembering your manners. Besides, manners are all right for cups and mama's bear, mama bears. <gasps> Bonk! Uh-oh, they crashed. But we papa bears have other things to worry about. At that moment... The car stopped in front, and suddenly he bumped into it. Ah! Oh, why did he do that? Fiddle brain, he said. Oh, no. Name calling, reminded sister. <laughs> the penalty for name calling was cleaning the whole cellar, so Papa griddled his teeth and remembered his manners, and a good thing, too, because climbing out of the other car was the biggest, angriest bear they'd ever seen. But when the angry bear saw how polite Papa was, he remembered his manners, too. He explained that he stopped short because a mama duck and, it, and her ducklings had crossed in front of him. Then he and Papa Bear looked at their bumpers and saw that there was no harm that had been done. As I was saying, said Papa Bear, it's very important for us to remember our manners at all times. And I wanted to say, and I want to thank you, sister, for reminding me to remember mine. You're very welcome. I'm sure, said Sister Bear. You know, it looks like they helped each other remember their manners and how to be kind to people inside of their house and when they're outside of their house in public. All right, guys, it's time for me to excuse you to go play. Um, I, before I excuse you, though, I would like you to turn to your parent and ask them what your options are and pick one of those options. Awesome. You guys can go now play inside. Um, whatever activity you choose. Have a great day.